my special special guest today is a big trouble making Jew gal, <laughs> kind of like me, and her name is Laura Loomer. Only she's way braver than me. Uh, so welcome, Laura. Thanks for having me. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. It's wonderful to meet you and have you here. You Thank are you. one brave young woman. Thank you. You're only 25 years old. Yes, I'm single. Only 25. I'm single. Yes. <laughs> Any prospects? Serious? It's very hard to meet a man who can keep up with me because uh, it's also really hard to meet a man who has balls that's that are either bigger than mine or as big as mine, and a lot of men don't like that. So, I'm very single. Your balls are fucking huge. <laughs> I'm telling you what, he's got big ass balls. <laughs> well, how long have you had big ass balls like that? Well, <laughs> I, I guess I've always really been outspoken, but probably uh, since I was about 19 or 20 years old. I'm 25 now. So before that, you were a uh, shy, retiring wallflower type. I don't buy it. I was never really shy or a wallflower, but. You know, it wasn't until I was about 19 or 20 that I really uh, started uh, the work that I'm doing now, right? I started to be more outspoken. I was always outspoken, but when I was in college, I was the president of the College Republicans, and I got more involved and had more access to more people. Uh, and so my ideas were able to kind of uh, get further than the inside of my head. Do the College Republicans like the Jews? Yeah, the College Republicans do, but you know, the universities don't really like the college Republicans or the Jews, so it was very hard to be a college Republican. They don't like Republican. Christians either, right? Yeah, I mean, it, I went to a Catholic uh, university, oh. even though I'm Jewish, but they gave me a really good scholarship, so, you know, I wouldn't be a very good Jew if I turned down free money. Yeah, so, that's right, Laura. Yeah, so <laughs> I took the scholarship and I went to school with the Catholics, but... Uh, Were they nice? I mean, it was weird, you know, it was it was bizarre because I always tell the story of how I really got started and it was on 9-11 um, at my university, they were having a 9-11 memorial and it was this interfaith ceremony and they allowed for an imam, I went to a school called Barry University, and they allowed for this imam to open up the ceremony on 9-11 by chanting Allahu Akbar, right? And mind you, it was supposed to be an interfaith ceremony and the pamphlet for the ceremony was two pages uh, long and a page and a half was dedicated to Islam and so I spoke out about that because why would you right why would you allow for an imam to open uh, a 9-11 memorial on 9-11 right an Islamic terrorist attack uh, so it was very bizarre and that was kind of my first run-in with these um, institutional elites and the brainwashing and the propaganda of the left I mean I always knew it was there but I never realized how vicious and how uh, severe it was until I was sitting in that room on 9-11 and they were trying to get, you know, an entire chapel full of college kids to chant Allahu Akbar on 9-11, you know. And it was that moment when I really realized someone needs to do something about this. You know, it really just sparked a switch in my head and kind of set things off for me. It really How do you feel about it. these people, this is a pet peeve of mine, that say the Jew, American Jews have dual loyalties, you know, like Omar said that. Right, well, Ilhan Omar, right, she came to this country from Somalia, and she likes to call herself the first Muslim woman elected to Congress. But, I mean, look, if, if she wants to say that Jews have dual loyalties, you know, that is, it's, it's a hateful thing for her to say, right? It's, it's an anti-Semitic trope. They're trying to say that, that Jewish individuals really can't be loyal to anything, uh, besides their own, right? That we can't be good Americans. Uh, but I would say that Ilhan Omar doesn't even have a singular loyalty to the United States of America. I would say her entire loyalty and her entire focus uh, is, is to Islam. That's and that's right. seen in the She's way that she is, woman. she is obsessed, right? With, with reaffirming that she is not just a Congresswoman, but she's the first Muslim. How about they put her on the, uh, the Foreign Affairs of foreign. Committee, yeah. So it's really dangerous, too, to have somebody like that. You have a woman who is making all of these really hostile, anti-Jewish, anti-Israel remarks, serving on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, trying to meddle in U.S. foreign policy. But what I'm really concerned about, like, just forget about her anti-Jewish comments. I like how she says APAC is such a big lobby that owns Congress, but she's a lobbyist of care. 
Yeah, she is. She's a lobbyist of care. And, and they've interfered in politics on the local level all yeah. across our country. And the national level, too. I mean, their office is one block away from the White House, and it came out in a Wall Street Journal Do you think report. they're more powerful than APAC? Yeah, I really do. I do, too. I do, too, because they're even silencing American journalists now. And I don't, I've never heard of APAC silencing, uh, you know, anybody they disagree with. But, you know, you have CARE, of course, the Council on American Islamic Relations, and the Wall Street Journal just reported uh, in January that they actually lobbied Facebook and Twitter behind the scenes uh, to ban me. And so that's why I got banned from Twitter is because I had posted that Ilhan Omar was anti-Jewish and that she was pro-Sharia. And CARE didn't like that because they obviously endorsed Ilhan Omar. And so they went to Twitter and they went to Facebook and they asked for me to be banned, I guess. And uh, now I'm banned practically everywhere. But this is the problem. But, you know, the thing is, is that people are concerned about her anti-Semitic remarks. Well, what honestly concerns me more than her Jew hatred as a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee is her ties to terrorist organizations. So you look at CARE. CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, has been designated in the United Arab Emirates as a Islamic terrorist organization. They were found during the Holy Land Foundation uh, terrorism trial to have ties to Hamas. Uh, and, you know, their, their founding members uh, have stated uh, that they would like Islam to dominate in America. And they are, they are tied to uh, many individuals in this country who have ties to terrorist organizations and, and terror plots themselves. Uh, like a guy by the name of Siraj Wahaj, who uh, is, is very close friends with Nihad Awad. His son, right, this is a story you and I had talked about privately, his son was uh, the guy who was arrested at the New Mexico compound where they were training those kids to be school shooters. And the, this is who they're hanging out with. They're also and, hanging out with people like We William have Star to state Sword. here that the mainstream media will call this a conspiracy theory because it's yeah. factual. Yeah, they call it a conspiracy theory, but uh, there's nothing conspiratorial about it. It's all factual information, but they just don't want you talking about this, right? They don't want you talking about the fact that we have a congresswoman who's on the Foreign Affairs Committee who advocated on behalf of uh, members of ISIS, right? Men who tried to join ISIS overseas from Somalia in Minnesota, which is now our nation's uh, leading uh, terrorist recruitment capital which happens to also be Ilhan Omar's uh, district in, in Minneapolis, the 5th Congressional District. Listen, have you ever gotten high? You said you've never smoked pot before. No, I, I've smoked pot, but I've just never uh, really smoked it from a pipe. I just kind of like those edibles and smoke joints. And well, I want you to <clears throat> be, I want to be the first person that you ever smoked pot with. Oh, I'm going to show you how to do it, yeah. and then we're going to talk about anti-Semitism. All right. Yeah, we're going right? to talk about Jew hatred while smoking weed. Yeah, it's the best. It's great. <laughs> <laughs>